Hello, friends, and welcome back to Discover Christian Mysticism with John Adams. John Adams. And today we're talking about levels of spiritual consciousness. We're talking about the process of growth that the Holy Spirit leads us through as spiritual people and as followers of Christ. Now, I think most Christians get an either or, all or nothing version of the spiritual life. You're either saved or you're unsaved. You're either in or you're out. There are only two levels of spiritual consciousness to talk about for most of us. Either your sins are forgiven, you've been justified in the sight of God, been sanctified and transformed into a new creature, and you're completely full of the Holy Spirit, or you're completely lost in sin, alienated from God, incapable of any good, and dead inside. But there are three problems with such a dualistic view of salvation. The first one is with our spiritual lives. A few Christians get dramatic conversion experiences like Paul on the road to Damascus. We instantly see everything in a new way and our lives immediately change. But for most Christians, it's not that clean. At some point, we ask God to forgive our sins and we give our lives to Christ. We see a few early signs of the Holy Spirit's work in us. But then a lot of the old unholy thoughts, desires, and habits stick around for a long time. Since we only know two levels of spiritual consciousness, either in or out, then we're left wondering if our conversion was sincere, if we're one of the elect, if God even loves us, or if we're really saved. The second problem is with evangelism. A dualistic view of salvation makes evangelism all about getting people saved that first time, getting them in. But what are we supposed to do on day two? Just enjoy our salvation and try not to mess up again? Is that all there is? to Christian spirituality and to the life of following Christ? If we think there are only two levels of spiritual consciousness, saved and unsaved, then we will never reach out for the kind of spirit-filled, holy life that we see in Jesus and the apostles. Christians need movement. We need growth. We need dynamic transformation. Or we just get stuck as grumpy, holier-than-thou people who are sitting around waiting for the world to end. The third problem is with the New Testament. For the most part, the New Testament does not portray salvation as this kind of dualistic thing. The New Testament always talks about our salvation as an ongoing process. In 1 Corinthians 1.18, Paul calls believers, we who are being saved. The verb is an ongoing action. It's a process that's occurring. In Ephesians 4.13, Paul says that God is at work in us until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. For Paul and the New Testament writers, salvation is a process, and spiritual maturity is a process of growth for the individual and for the church. I mean, according to Luke 2.52, even Jesus increased in wisdom and in years, and in divine and human favor. Now, I care about this so much because it's really helped my spiritual life to understand that God is at work in me through a process of spiritual growth. I can be gracious with myself because I know there's still work to do. I know that I sin, not because I'm not saved or because I'm not one of the elect. I make mistakes and I fail because I'm not perfect yet. God is still working on me. He's still correcting me. And he's teaching me about himself in the process. So instead of condemning myself for not being perfect yet, I can look at my life and I can ask the Holy Spirit, where are you working in me right now? And how do I participate in your work, and submit to your will for my life. So if salvation and spiritual growth is a process, that raises some questions for the Christian. How many levels of spiritual consciousness are there? What level am I on? And how long until I'm finally perfect? The ancient Christian mystics all talk about three basic levels of spiritual consciousness. People are beginning, progressing, or perfect. Life is quite different at each stage. Here's an overview of the three stages of spiritual growth from my new book, Jesus, A Field Manual, How to Live the Sermon on the Mount, which is coming out in September. The first stage is beginning. At the start of the spiritual journey, God shows us who he is. God blesses us with the sweetness of his love and invites us to know him better. The second stage, progressing. When we receive God's sweetness, we want to do what God wants us to do. We try to obey and we encounter the bitterness of spiritual struggle. We grow, but only through the difficult cycle of failure and forgiveness. Stage three is perfection. We struggle for a long time between the sweetness of God's love 
the bitterness of discipline. As we go, the Holy Spirit works on our souls. We don't always see it, but the Spirit uses our struggles to transform us. The Spirit leads us closer to enlightenment and to God. We find a new, quiet joy growing in us. Despite our struggles and doubts, we feel that we are complete. We make peace with ourselves and with God. Now, you can find these levels of spiritual consciousness all throughout the mystical literature as late as The Dark Night of the Soul by St. John of the Cross. They actually go all the way back to the second century and the writer Origen. By the way, Origen used the three books of Old Testament wisdom literature, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Songs, as symbols for these three stages. If you want to read what Origen had to say about spiritual growth, there's a new post about it on my Patheos blog, and there's a link to that in the description. But my new book, Jesus, A Field Manual, is all about understanding what Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, then doing it so that we can be his disciples and follow him through the levels of spiritual consciousness to enlightenment. In the book, I build on these three levels of spiritual consciousness that the ancient mystics used, but I change them up a little, map out our relationship with Jesus and our growth as we respond to the Sermon on the Mount. My version of the three levels of spiritual consciousness comes from years of discipling people, and it also comes from watching the Holy Spirit work in me and in others. My three levels of spiritual consciousness are contact, commitment, and embodiment. Here's another section from the book. In the first stage of spiritual growth, we make contact with Jesus and the Sermon on the Mount. For some, that means hearing about Jesus for the first time. Others were first exposed to Christianity in hurtful or confusing ways. For them, contact means a fresh encounter with Jesus and a new start to their spiritual life. The goal of the stage of contact is to truly understand who Jesus is. It is to understand what his life and teachings mean for humanity. It is to hear him speak the Sermon on the Mount to you. Then, it is to receive his invitation and follow him for yourself. At the stage of commitment, we answer his call. We enlist to imitate his example and do what he says. We resolve to settle for nothing less than spiritual victory. We put our lives on the line to become the enlightened people that Jesus wants us to be. After long practice and some tough battles, we start to see a little of Jesus in ourselves. We know the Sermon on the Mount by heart, we know what Jesus expects in any situation, and we know how to do it. Obedience becomes more natural. Jesus' words are part of us. This is the third stage of spiritual growth called embodiment. The field manual is a guide to spiritual growth through these stages. Whatever stage you find yourself in, I think the field manual will help you encounter God through Jesus and will help you respond to his call and his commands in the Sermon on the Mount. And just to be clear, I haven't reached full enlightenment yet. I am very squarely still in the second stage of commitment. I'm working with the Holy Spirit day by day, put to death the deeds of the flesh, and surrender my will to Christ. But now that I understand the levels of spiritual consciousness, I'm not in a hurry. There are no real shortcuts to spiritual growth because the process of growth is something that God does in each of us in God's own time. Once in a while, I get to see sparks of Christ in myself. I know that the Holy Spirit is still at work. I know that, like Paul says, the one who began the good work in me will be faithful to complete it in the day of Jesus Christ. I know that all I have to do is show up, love my Heavenly Father, and try to do what my Lord Jesus says. And as I go, I know that the Holy Spirit will guide me through every stage of spiritual consciousness and growth and make me complete and perfect when I finally come face to face with Jesus Christ. So that's my take on the levels of spiritual consciousness. In the comments below, let me know where you find yourself on the spiritual path. Make sure to like this video and share it if you find it helpful. And please subscribe to this channel for more updates on the coming release of my new book, Jesus, A Field Manual, How to Live the Sermon on the Mount. There's a lot more in this book about spiritual growth. So wherever you find yourself on your spiritual journey, I think this book will be truly encouraging to you. I also need your help. In a week or two, I'm going to ask you to help me pick the cover design for the book, so stay tuned for that. You can find my Patheos blog, Rebuilding My Religion, at the link below, and you can get in touch with me through my website, withjohnadams.com. That's John with no H, withjohnadams.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time until we climb through all the levels of spiritual consciousness and Christ is formed in us.